This time I have a Samsung LED backlit TV in for service. This one, the owner is going to want this repaired because they need component inputs. And of course, the new TVs don't have component inputs. And they've got a whole home theater that's based on component only. And it costs them a lot of money to upgrade to HDMI. So they're going to want to fix this. We're going to troubleshoot it down to component level and find out what went wrong with it. Let's check it out. This time I got a Samsung. This is a 49MU6300. Dead. It's not a backlight problem. It's completely dead. No standby. The owner of this set is adamant that it gets fixed because they've got a Control 4 system for their remote control in their home theater setup. And their distribution is all done component video. The problem is new TVs don't have component video. They've done away with all the analog inputs on new TVs and everything must be done HDMI. And the cost of upgrading a Control 4 system to support HDMI is quite expensive. So they don't want to go down that road. They want to fix this one. So let's get the back off it and start doing some tests and see where the failure is on this one. We have to get a power board for it. We have to get a power board for it. Simple as that. And I've been authorized to do that if necessary. But let's diagnose the problem first. Let me get the back off. So this set to get the backs off, then you pry, put a screwdriver into the slot here, and you pop the back off. They're held in place by clips, and then you just basically have to get your screwdriver in and just start running it around to pop the clips off. There's no screws that hold the back on this one other than the feet. So we're going to just have to pop the back off. To let me get the back off this thing. Once you've got your screwdriver working its way around, you're able to lift the back off like that to reveal the power board and the main board. And this one, because it's got no power at all, we're going to be looking at the power board. Okay, first things first, check to make sure the fuse isn't popped. It's not. So we're going to have to check to see if we've got any standby voltage when I power it up. Make sure that we're actually getting a standby voltage over to the main board. That will tell us whether the problem's in the power supply or the problem could be the main board itself that's gone bad. Okay, let's check for standby voltage. It says over here standby should be 7.5 volts. We have 9 volts, so power supply is not dead. Power supply is alive, but the TV itself is dead. Let's just try turning it on and see what happens. Oh, we got 125 volts on this one. When I bring out the thermal camera, I don't see anything giving off any excessive heat. Like the board is dead cold. Same with on the power supply over here. There's nothing. There's nothing that's getting hot to indicate that there's a problem with a component that's overheating, but our standby voltage is there. Check to see if we're getting standby. Maybe there's a fuse or something that's popped over here, but nothing's jumping out at me right now that uh, says there's a problem. Like nothing's overheating. The fact that there's no light on here indicating that the unit's got power, right? There should be a standby light on here. The fact that there's no standby light is what makes me think, well, we may have a problem on the main board. Standby, there's, there's nine volts there. So there's power getting over to this board. I'll take a closer look at this board to see if I can spot anything on here that might be bad. It could be the board itself is shot, right? I checked all the fuses, they're not blown. I got uh, standby voltage getting up onto the board. Where was it here? nine volts on the board here this is on the fuse is going in so there's power getting over to this board this one over here has nothing on it but that might be a switched supply that's switched on and off with the set and the set's not switching on um, the fact that there's no indicator light here on this set here normally there'd be a red light on here when, when the set's plugged in to indicate it's got power I'm thinking something on the main board here 
because it's got standby and it's not telling the power supply to turn on so I think our problem on this one is probably the main board like I don't see any indication that there's anything that's that's getting hot in here at all if I focus the camera down here a little closer Thing about this thermal camera is I can focus it and I'm looking right here this is the uh, this is the power connector coming in over here I don't see any indication that anything is hot right, nothing's glowing that's just a reflection that we're seeing here off the chassis there's no indication that anything is getting hot at all say it was on the power supply side I mean nothing is uh, Nothing standing out that it's hot. Everything is cold, except for it's got power on it, obviously. But nothing generating any heat to give me any clues as to where the problem may be on this one. A way we can confirm that is what I suspect is if I unplug the power board, or unplug the power going to the, the main board from the power board. When I plug in the power, we should have backlights which we do, you can see the backlights on, right, right here. So, that's confirming that the fault is on the main board. So we'll check some voltages on the board here. We'll check some voltages at these coils. 3.3 volts, 5 volts, uh, this one here has got 1.8, this one's sitting at 0. Check the EEPROM, there's no voltage, 0. I'm thinking probably it's probably the processor that's bad. We'll just pull the board here and I'm gonna check something. Unplug. We'll remove the the panel. Okay. I'm gonna remove the board. I just want to look under the heat sink. I've been kind of probing around on the board. I may have found a small capacitor shorted on this board. Right down here, the one that's marked with 33. Right there, it looks like a little ceramic cap. And that also goes up to the EEPROM. Hmm. I'm going to try removing that little cap there. I mean, it very well could be the, the processor too, because the power over to the EEPROM. But certainly that short on that, looks like a ceramic cap, we shouldn't have a dead short across there. So, we remove that, if a voltage comes back and the set fires up, that'll be something. I had that happen on a Panasonic Plasma, a little, little bypass cap that went dead short and killed everything. Okay, I'm just lifting it up on one side. Just try powering the set up. See if I get the standby light back. Still got my thermal camera here because I couldn't find anything getting hot. So I've still got it sitting here. But, um, apply power and see whether the standby light lights up. If it does, I'll be a happy camper. All right. Nope. 
Upon closer inspection, that looked to be a, a chip resistor, so I've put it back on the board. This is definitely the feed, though, for the the power to the EEPROM, and there's no power there. And it looks like we got a short on it. I think what I might try doing is I try, might try powering up the EEPROM and just see whether we get any heat. I'm thinking it's in the chip here, so I'll disconnect everything and I'll get a 3.3 volt supply and we'll just try powering up the EEPROM while watching the uh, processor under the thermal camera to see whether any heat is detected. Because I am pretty sure it's the, it's the processor that's at fault. The, the processor is what feeds the EEPROM. So we'll disconnect all the external circuitry and I'll get my power supply and we'll just apply 3.3 volts to here and watch the uh, chip. So let me get set for that. All right, so this is the big IC right there. My finger on it there. We're going to apply 3.3 volts to the uh, EEPROM. And well, I just did it there for a sec. Oh, look at that. That chip's getting red hot. There is our fault. That chip has popped. There's our fault. Definitely the processor. As you can see there when I did it. Now I gotta let it cool down for a second. I only gave it like 200 milliamps of current. But there you go. Nothing else is getting hot. Other than the, when I touch it. You can see my hand over here when I touch it. I may, might see a bit of a heat signature there, maybe not. Anyway, I don't see anything else getting hot here. You know, like I don't see any other components that are indicating a short. Nothing else is getting hot, just that IC. There's our our fault. Needs a new board. Didn't see it. Uh, I bet you if I power this thing up, will I see it if I power it up with the power supply? I don't know. I don't think I will. It's probably not going to produce that much heat. But we'll fire it up with the power supply as well. I don't think we're going to see anything on it with the uh, thermal camera. But we'll see. With the heat sink on, I sure, certainly didn't see it, but. So there it is with the power supply, and as you can see, nothing's heating up on the power supply. It's staying nice and cool. Disconnect the power, and hit the 3.3 volt supply again, and it, it lights up like a Christmas tree. There you go. Okay, anyway, now we know where the fault is. Thermal cameras are great. If I put it in color mode, just for shits and giggles, Get that sucker get hot. Like she's getting real hot there. Captain, we don't got the power. Well, the power is going into that shorted IC. Anyway, I'm um, going to leave it at that for now because um, we got to get a board for this. And uh, we'll pick this up with a new board at some point down the road. Thanks for watching Troubleshooting 101 of a Samsung main board.